pilot my whole adult life, and so I've, I've talked on the radio, uh, seems like daily, uh, but I've never been an amateur radio operator, and so we have a, a very, very active program there at NASA, of course, and on the space station we have, now, we now have two uh, radio sets up there, but we had a, we had a very active uh, ham radio set that's on board this space station. And I was asked uh, probably about a year before I was getting ready to fly in space, um, would I like to, would I be interested in doing the, uh, operating the ham radio on board? I said, sure, that'd be fun. And that was sort of my reaction. It's like, you know, how hard could this be? And how much will this change my life? But uh, um, it was amazing. You know, I, I had taken this a test and I've actually, my, my call sign here on earth is uh, KF5BOC, but I've never used it. That's my gravity, I call that my gravity call sign. And, uh, but my real call sign is NA1SS from the space station. And um, I'm sort of, I've sort of got this uh, emotional attachment to that now. And I um, and, uh, had a great time. I don't know, was there anybody in this room that I made contact with? I know they're right here, okay, awesome. And um, we just had a great time. The scouts, we talked to the scouts at one of the jamborees, actually a couple of jamborees. Uh, through that whole time I was up there. I went up uh, in June and stayed for six months and I came back in November uh, on Thanksgiving Day actually. Landed in that little Russian capsule, you know, that little charcoal briquette. We kind of, we kind of, we actually logged two landings. We hit, we bounced, and we hit again and we rolled over. So we logged it as two landings. But, uh, um, you know, I have to tell you that, uh, that amateur radio really, um, after all these years and all this training I've been through, really has changed my life for the good in the, that's changed my, it's completely changed my perspective uh, on communication and, um, and really getting down to the basics. And, you know, I, I was the commander of the spaceship and we had a very, very major malfunction last summer where the spaceship, you know, there's something that happens to you when you're inside of a spaceship and it starts to die right before your eyes and you're not sure what's happening and, uh, and actually, I had this warm, fuzzy feeling uh, that I ha always had this ham radio. If I needed to get em emergency communication, I knew I had friends around the globe now. And only the, when this accident happened, it was uh, at the end of July last year. So I'd been in space for about a month and a half. And I had made friends around the world and uh, made a lot of contacts through, uh, through the US and I thought, I thought, you know, I have these emergency contacts on every continent on that planet down there. And I thought if my communication goes out with mission control, I am not hesitating one bit to uh, call some of my friends and say, hey, Chris, could you uh, give, uh, give mission control a jingle and tell them that we're okay? And I, said, and I, I was not hesitant at all. In fact, when that accident happened, um, I went, uh, uh, it was a Saturday night. It was July 31st. It was a Saturday night. We operate out of, off of Greenwich Mean Time. And so uh, our, our day is usually we wake up at 6 a.m. Greenwich and then we, we operate on like an eight hour work day and then we have some downtime, which I used to uh, play on the ham radio a little bit and, um, and have a gr had a great time. I think we made 1,500 contacts or somewhere about there. And um, I would like to introduce Ken Ransom back here as well. Ken, Ken is actually our uh, amateur radio guru, I'm going to call him, okay? This is his official title now, at NASA in Houston. And so uh, Ken is a great guy to know. Uh, to, he's tra he trains all of us, and he keeps us straight. And, uh, and uh, I got in trouble one time. I'll tell that story here in just a second. I don't know. But uh, only one time. But uh, um, anything, any, any and all things to do with talking to the space station on the ham radio, uh, talk to Kenneth. He's a great guy to get, get his card and uh, his call sign and, uh, and make contact with us because it is a tremendous amount of fun to... Uh, to uh, to talk to everybody around the globe, you know, when you when you're up there for six months in space, you know, the place gets to be kind of small. You know, it's a it's a big station, but uh, it's kind of like it's built like kind of like a habit trail. If you've ever had a gerbil or a hamster or something, you know, only instead of hamsters, there's little astronauts crawling around, and uh, that the walls can kind of close in on you after a few months. And and uh, the friends that I made in the amateur radio uh, business and community. I now feel like a, a, just an entrenched uh, member of this community, um, and I, it really, truly has changed my life for the better. I have to tell you one funny, funny story about, um, I met this guy, uh, 
he was in Lisbon, Portugal. He's actually originally from Brazil, but uh, he lives in Lisbon, and his name is Fabiano. And I don't recall his call sign, but every time I would come over, the footprint would come over uh, the European continent, Fabiano was there, and I'd be on that ham radio, and I was just, Fabiano, and I, he was telling me how he, what uh, modifications he's doing to his home and everything, and we were talking about just uh, little things. He goes, where are you now? And I'd look out the window, and we, you know, we just uh, built a friendship. And um, this was in, actually before our accident, but, um, or the incident anyway, the, the moment that changed our lives forever. But the, the um, Fabiano said, you know, my birthday is in the, at the, on August 25th, is my birthday. I said, so I wrote that down, you know, I thought on August 25th, I'm gonna look to see if we have a Passover in Europe because I wanna call Fabiano. So, so we, uh, sure enough, August 25th, uh, it was the day before, it was the 24th, I looked at the passes, I thought, perfect, we got one like right over Lisbon, you know. So I think I'm gonna call Fabiano and sing happy birthday to him, you know. And uh, so anyway, I get, on the, I get on the radio, I call Fabiano, he's there, and I sang happy birthday to Fabiano over the ham radio. And, um, and I, got a, I got a note from Kenneth, who did all of my training. I got an email note the next day, and he goes, hey, you know, it's, uh, you're not allowed to uh, broadcast music over the, over the ham radio. And I was like, I was, I was so hurt, you know, because I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm such, a, like, uh, such a, uh, a member of your community now, and you're, you guys are family to me, you know? And so I felt, you know how when you disappoint somebody, I was like, I disappointed Kenneth, you know? But it, <laughs> But I, I thought for a minute, I thought, you know, I, I felt like I was kind of slapped on the wrist a little bit by NASA. And then I thought, you know what? And then I felt flattered that my singing of uh, uh, Happy Birthday was actually considered music. So I was like, <laughs> so, anyway, but, uh, I wanna, so now I know I'm not allowed to broadcast music over the ham radio. But the, um, anyway, but the, the accident, and what I want to leave you with is, uh, is you know in life whether whether or not this is our hobby or we and whatever our workplace is our profession if we're in school somewhere um, whatever it is that our chosen profession you know we're on this pathway to to things that we and all along that pathway is our journey our life's journey you know and along that pathway are goals that we set for ourselves you know things that we aspire to be or become or uh, places we want to go or things we want to do things we want to build you know is all along this pathway of our life and uh, you know sometimes the storm comes you know well actually always the storm is going to come and uh and my parting thought with you this morning i just just to be prepared you know for those storms in life you know we we were ready and um and and the ham radio the amateur radio on, on board the space station was part of my plan you know on this pathway to success you know you have this brick wall that drops down in front of you right on your pathway and you know sometimes our pathway in life is through this beautiful meadow you know with all these gorgeous flowers and the birds are singing and the pathway is wide and it's beautiful but oftentimes in life it's the pathway isn't like that sometimes there's a very very dark forest on either side that we can't even see in there and it's kind of scary to look off the side of that pathway sometimes it's steep cliffs on either side and that wall is going to fall and it, it falls every day for us in our lives as these problems we face and um you know we can do one of three things and uh we can stand there in fear and we can look at the obstacle and, and just be frozen in fear and guess what you can survive you can live you can live your life you can you can attain things, you can, uh, you can go places, but uh, just on the other side of that barrier are your goals and dreams as well. And so, so we, we can choose to stand there and frozen in fear and never attain those things. And I think, I think in listening, especially to these young people that have found such a passion in this, uh, in this community, that um, you know, the, the greatest tragedy, tragedy in life is to have a goal or a dream that goes unrealized because we're frozen in fear. Now I've done that many times in my life, you know, when the obstacles, when the storms come, when the obstacles fall on our pathway. You know, another thing we could do, we can turn and run away. We could do that. And I've done that a lot of times as well when problems come. And we can but the problem with that is, you know, we end up on a different path. You know, I heard a quote this week that uh, if you have no idea where you're going, any path will do. You know, so and it's very true. It doesn't matter what pathway you're on, if you have no idea what you're, what you're, where you're going or what your goals and dreams are, 
then, then that's right, any path will do. But if we turn and run, we'll end up on a different path that, that you know, just on the other side of that are, are the things that we want to attain. And so the things that you're being taught in school, the things that we're taught in, in community, especially a community like this, the things that these kids are teaching us about solving problems, and we're, we're equipped with these sledgehammers, you know, we can, or ropes, we can go over this thing, we can go around this thing, or we can pick up a sledgehammer, or we can bash right through it. And that's exactly the problem we faced on the space station uh, last summer. And uh, we were able, you know, the alarms went off, it was a Saturday night, and everybody else was in their crew quarters sleeping, and uh, I had just shut down the treadmill, and about 10 minutes later, the, uh, the alarms went off. And, um, and I looked and I, I kept silencing the alarm, silencing the alarm. I picked up the mic and said, Houston, are you there? And, and they weren't answering. And so then I looked and all my crewmates were there. And they, they said, what did you do? I said, I just turned off the treadmill, I promise you. But um, anyway, we had a pump module that failed. And we ended up having to go outside and do uh, three spacewalks. I think I talked to a lot of you guys about that as we came back in from those spacewalks. I got on the ham radio and we talked about it and everything. And it was a really, really using that radio and having you guys as an emergency contact for us around the globe was a warm, warm feeling for me as a commander aboard that space station. So thank you for letting me be a part of your community. Thank you. I'm sorry I took up way too much time probably, but but um, Chris, that was awesome. I, I didn't get to hear a lot of the other talks, but... Uh, Man, when you have, I mean, for, from us old guys, you know, I mean, when you hear stuff like that, it's like, I feel even better of knowing that ham radio was there on that space station. I was like, I can call and I can get a guy like Chris, you know, it's like, dude, I got a problem, you know, so, and have a guy like this uh, help me out. So, anyway, thank you very much. Enjoy your stay, uh, and um, it's great to talk to you guys, and the, those that I talked to over the ham radio uh, while I was on board the station, thank you guys. You, you are my heart and soul up there. And uh, we really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Because I would not want any child to follow this act, I'm going to volunteer to just jump in here for a minute and take a picture with you, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys.